Community Cats podcast. Ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Community Cats podcast. I am your host, Stacey LeBaron. I have been involved helping homeless cats for over 20 years with the Merrimack River Feline Rescue Society. The goal of this podcast is to expose you to amazing people who are improving the lives of cats. I hope these interviews will help you learn how you can turn your passion for cats into action. Today, we are speaking with Pamela Krauss. Pamela has a master's of education and has been involved with promoting spay neuter for almost 20 years. As the director of humane education at the Pennsylvania Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals in the early 1990s, Pamela learned firsthand the tragedy of pet overpopulation and need for affordable spay neuter programs. Once moving to Vermont, she founded and was the chairperson for United Humanitarians Vermont Branch from 1993 to 2003, and then Spay Ed from 2006 to the present. Both organizations facilitated affordable spay and neuter for low income residents. Pamela is a founding board member of Spay ASAP and is a founder and the executive director of Vermont Companion Animal Neutering. Vermont Can is a high quality, high volume, low cost spay and neuter clinic located in central Vermont. The need for a stationary clinic quickly became clear once Pamela started coordinating MASH-style mobile clinics with Spay ASAP in 2006. The clinics, usually two a month, filled up as soon as they were announced, and Vermont CAN can do 30 to 40 plus surgeries a day and does about 3,200 a year in rural Vermont. Pamela did humane education programs for eight years and taught mathematics for 11 years. She is dedicated to solving the pet overpopulation problem by stopping its exponential growth through spay and neuter. To date, Vermont CAN has altered over 22,600 animals and has provided free spay and neuter for over 5,000 cats. Pamela, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me, Stacy. So... What an incredible accomplishment for the work that you've done up here in Vermont. I was wondering if you might be able to tell me a little bit more about how you got started and how you got interested in helping community cats. When I was in Philadelphia, I literally saw hundreds of animals euthanized every week. And many of these were cats. Many were stray cats from the streets. And when I moved to Vermont, I realized that even though it was a small state that didn't have much of a dog overpopulation problem, there was a cat problem. And many of the cats that were in need were free roaming or barn cats. We don't have the typical street cats that the big cities have, but farms in Vermont are full of cats that need to be spayed, neutered. So when you were down in Pennsylvania, did you have any mentors that showed you about spay neuter clinics or how to run them? Or how did you learn about how to start a spay neuter clinic? I didn't learn about starting a spay neuter clinic when I was in Philadelphia, but I did learn about spay neuter. I worked with a small all volunteer group called the Spade Club. And they talked and promoted spay-neuter as the answer to pet overpopulation. Spay-neuter is more important than adoption. And I really listened and I learned a lot from this little tiny group. This group is now, actually has a clinic like ours in Philadelphia area. I believe it's in Sharon Hill. And they're doing thousands of spay-neuter every year. But the way I learned about starting a clinic was from the Humane Alliance located in Asheville, North Carolina. And Humane Alliance has helped over 150 clinics like ours get started across the country. You also um, worked with, um, with Dr. Sarah White with her MASH style clinics. Can you tell me a little bit about the differences between the stationary clinic versus the MASH style clinic? Sure. Our clinic is a building. So we have a set location. We have all of our surgery equipment and all of our supplies there in the clinic. With a MASH style clinic, all the hospital materials and supplies that you need and the equipment are in a small vehicle like a RAV4 or in in Dr. Sarah White's case, she's driving a Kia now. She used to drive a Scion. And you travel to different places with your equipment and you set up a hospital on site wherever you go. Many of these places are humane societies where you use a community room. 
Sometimes they're in church basements. Sometimes they are in town community centers. We've been to fire stations. We've been to places like American Legions and Knights of Columbus. And Vermont Can actually does have its own MASH component now. And we do travel with a, a RAV4, all the equipment's in a RAV4. We set up on site and we can do as many as we can in the stationary clinic. And if you were like a group that didn't have any spay neuter program and you were thinking about starting out, would you recommend that you first start out with a MASH style or just jump right in and try and do all the fundraising that you need to develop a stationary clinic? Some of that really depends on whether or not you have a veterinarian on board. In the case of spay ASAP, Dr. White is a veterinarian and she was able to start the MASH unit and do the surgeries. If you are someone like me who is not a veterinarian, you are probably better off starting a stationary clinic and looking for grant money to start that where you hire veterinarians and technicians. It's interesting. I do know that having a veterinarian on staff or hiring and retaining veterinarians can be very challenging. And some would say that we even still have a shortage of spay neuter veterinarian across the country. Would you agree with that? I definitely think there needs to be more across the country. We're very lucky in Vermont that we have probably more than our fair share. Um, but yes, definitely there need to be more high volume spay neuter clinics, especially in the South, in places like Texas, Alabama, Louisiana, where they have a much, much greater pet overpopulation problem. They could use many more clinics down there. Why do you think there's the difference with regards to pet overpopulation? I mean, why are we so much more successful in New England versus other parts of the country? Just obviously we've had the, I guess, the spay neuter clinics longer in place, but are there other things that are working in our favor that other parts of the country don't? This is just my, my personal opinion. I don't actually have any data to back this up, but I think that some of the reason is that we are a small state here in Vermont and people are, are on board with spay neuter. It's part of our culture. They want it to happen. It's very commonplace. Other places, it's just not really that it's not part of their culture. It's not something that everybody is thinking about doing. So the education really needs to get out there. And of course, with higher populations, you're going to have so many more animals. And possibly, you know, our cold weather, we don't have street dogs here. Our, our climate can't, can't handle that. So we don't have a lot of the stray dogs that other places have. And the same thing with street cats. We were talking in the pre-interview um, section about the challenges that you face here in Vermont in dealing with barns and cats in barns and cats being dropped off at barns. Uh, can you expand a bit on those challenges that you have? We get a lot of farmers who come into our clinic and they all say the same thing. People just keep dropping cats off at their farm. And even people who don't have an actual working farm, they just have a place that looks like a farm, they say the same thing. A lot of people seem to think that a farm is a great place for a cat to live and that if they drop the cat off, the cat will be fed, there's cows, there's milk, there's mice. But if the cat is intact and it's a female cat, she will soon have kittens and the population gets out of control. And that's just not fair to the farmers. Most of our farmers in Vermont are willing to shelter and feed some cats, but they can't feed dozens and dozens. And one of the things I keep hearing is that People think that farms are better than the humane societies. I think some people are locked into what was going on 20, 30 years ago in shelters where the euthanasia rate was high. In Vermont, we have an extremely low euthanasia rate, and it's usually only done for very sick animals or animals who just cannot be rehomed on either a farm or into a private home. It's just such a low rate. We are not euthanizing for space anymore in Vermont, and I think that people should be aware of that. Yeah, so they can definitely turn to their local shelter as a community resource, and rather than thinking that the best solution is dropping them off at a barn, and I guess in an urban setting, it would be behind McDonald's or a Walmart or something like that. Say, oh, there's a dumpster there that, you know, they'll get the leftover hamburgers or whatever. It's uh, not the not the best idea. And if you're up against a wall, you need to turn to the local 
uh, adoption center or shelter for assistance and, and help is available at this point in time. Absolutely. And I, I don't know if most people know this or not, but most of the shelters in Vermont have what's called a spay the mom program. And I know that uh, when people discover their female cat's pregnant, that is often a time where they will drop the cat off at a farm. But the spay the mom program at shelters, they will get the mother spayed if she's already had kittens. Um, and they will get the kittens adopted out. They'll take the kittens, get them vaccinated, spay neutered, and then they'll adopt them. So there are options out there. And something else to know is that um, there are programs. There are places like our clinic where we can help get that cat spayed. We will even do some pregnant cats if that's what needs to be done. It's better than dropping them off on a farm. For folks that need assistance, I feel at this point in time, we just need to share, what is the uh, website for your clinic? The website for our clinic is just vt-can.org. And those letters are V as in Victor, T as in Tom, hyphen, C as in cat, A as in apple, N as in Nancy, dot O-R-G. And say I couldn't afford even the cost of your clinic. Are, are there any subsidy programs in Vermont available for folks? Yeah, there's a state program called VSNP, and people who are income eligible can get vouchers and go to their participating vet. Right now, the copay is $27, and people can get an application and participating vet list at their website, and it's vsnp.org. That's V as in Victor, S as in Sam, N as in Nancy, I as in Igloo, P as in Paul, dot O-R-G. That's excellent. So the people have really every opportunity to be able to get their cat spayed or neutered. And now let's take a moment to listen to a few words from our sponsors. Ready to make a big difference for cats in your community? We've got an exciting opportunity that can jumpstart your efforts. The Community Cats Podcast has launched Community Cats Grants. When you qualify for this innovative program, you'll gain valuable knowledge about how to raise funds for your spay-neuter efforts. Plus, we'll match the funds you raise up to $1,000, doubling your ability to make a difference for cats. Fundraising doesn't have to be scary. We'll be with you every step of the way. Check it out. You can find all of the details on the Community Cats Podcast website under our education menu. Let's join forces to make the world a better place for community cats. What are the greatest challenges that you are facing with regards to your clinic today? Interestingly enough, one of the things that is happening is that our numbers are dropping. It seems that we are doing so much spay neuter that we're almost putting ourselves out <laughs> of business in a way, which is a, which is a great thing. And we are finding that there's a great need for just some basic care beyond spay neuter. And because we're just a spay neuter clinic, that that's a challenge for us to, to get these calls where we aren't able to do anything at this point. But yet you still felt the need to add a MASH style component to your program. And that's just because people can't travel that far to your clinic. You have to go to other parts of the state that are sort of beyond a, I don't know, what would you say, 25, 50 mile radius around your clinic? Exactly. We've done so many surgeries in central Vermont that the people coming into our clinic, the numbers have, have decreased some. And we were looking at the data and statistics and see that other places are not in the same situation as we are. So we're going to other counties so that people have that access so that they can easily go to places that are offering the spay neuter at a lower cost. In terms of the cities in Vermont, Burlington, Montpelier, maybe any other areas, you basically feel that they've got enough coverage and programs for helping community cats? For helping owned cats, I would say that we're in better shape. For community cats, we need more help. Absolutely. When a cat is not living in somebody's home and friendly, it's very difficult to get them and bring them to a clinic. Oftentimes when there's many cats at one location, they need to be trapped, they need to be transported, and there just aren't enough volunteers and people doing that right now. And also, we do not have the, the funding to do an unlimited number of free-roaming cats. Generally speaking, those are the cats that don't have pocketbooks, and they need to be subsidized. 
So more funding is needed to do the surgeries and also human power to do the trapping and transporting. Your organization, though, has partnered with a really interesting group up in the northern part of the state. I didn't know if you'd like to touch upon the relationship that you've had with um, with Bonnie's group. Yeah, the uh, Felines and Friends Foundation in the Northeast Kingdom, we partnered with them so that we could try to target cats, especially barn cats up in the Northeast Kingdom. We saw that area as one of the places in Vermont that didn't have very many resources, and there was a great need. And we've done over 2,000 cats with them, and they're really seeing a difference. They are having a hard time finding cats to bring to our clinics when they reserve a day. So that's really exciting and fun news. Yeah, it's incredible impact being felt over. And how many years has this partnership been going on? I believe that we first met in around 2011 and started working together with more high volume 2013. And uh, the 2,000 cats happened 2013 to 2015. I usually think about if you can really do a concerted, targeted effort for three to five years, then you're definitely going to see some change in that period of time. Absolutely. And one thing that a lot of people don't realize is how much healthier the cat population is on, on farms when the population is spayed and neutered. We worked with a group in central Vermont or a farm in central Vermont, and they were very, very hesitant at first, but they had a lot of cats and they were very sick. After we went in and altered all the cats and rehabilitated and rehomed the kittens that were sick, they were saying, oh, our cats look so much better. They're so much healthier. This is great. And uh, we contacted them in April when we had a small grant And they said, nope, they don't have any more cats. All their cats are doing great. So it really does work. It makes a huge difference. That's that's fantastic. And you sound like you are a believer of the targeted spay-neuter effort. Absolutely. It makes a lot of sense to focus on one area at a time. And as soon as you get that problem under control, you can move outward to different areas, especially if they're contiguous to the area you've already done. Targeted spay-neuter absolutely works. Um, I noticed that you've gotten a lot of funding from different foundations to help um, support your efforts. Do you have any tips for folks who are venturing into doing some grant writing? One of the things about grant writing is everybody has a similar story that there's a need. And you really need to do research about your community and have data to back up what the need is. We all feel the same way. We all want to help. Grantors want to help, but they need to know that their money is being well spent. So you can't just rely on tugging on the heartstrings. You need to provide a solid plan and data to to back up the need. That's a great point um, to be very convincing about the effectiveness of your of your ask and that you're going to follow through with what you say you're going to do. So Pamela, one more time, if folks are interested in finding out more um, about Vermont Can, how would they reach out to the clinic to make a reservation or find out how they could contribute? I assume you accept contributions. Absolutely. You can make a donation on our website via PayPal. And again, our website is vt-can.org. People can call to make an appointment, 802 223 0034. And people can email us. That's often the fastest, best way to reach us. And our email is info at vt-can.org. You also have a very active uh, Facebook page too. Is that also under VT Can? It is. It's under VT Can Spay Neuter Clinic. And you have some great stories posted there. Certainly feel free to donate to Pamela's uh, clinic. And she sometimes often will have a particular case that you will have like a cat that needs some extra surgery or something like that. And we'll have their stories up on the Facebook page. So I highly recommend that Facebook page. You do a great job with it. Thank you. And so in closing, uh, Pamela, is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners? A couple things. People call and tell me that their cat, their female cat, is urinating in the house inappropriately or their male cat is spraying. And people tell me that their cat got pregnant at five months. So just really quickly, a couple things. We really recommend spaying and neutering by four months of age. 
Cats can get pregnant. Female cats can get pregnant at four months. Male cats, if they're neutered early, are much less likely to start that negative behavior. And female cats will mark and pee in the house when they're in heat. And a lot of people just don't realize that. Excellent points. Thank you for bringing those points up. And the other point, too, that I think is so important is that when we do adopt from shelters, that we really make sure that those cats are spayed and neutered before adoption. Yes. I think that most of the shelters, if not all in Vermont, uh, have them altered before they adopt them out. And I know people often look for a free kitten and think that adoption fees are too high. But when you take into consideration that that kitten is already spayed, neutered, has had their first kitten vaccinations, been dewormed, been examined by a vet, been microchipped, it's a fantastic deal. If you get a free kitten, you're going to be shocked with all the things you need to do just to get that kitten home ready, so to speak. Pamela, I want to thank you so much for agreeing to be a guest on my show, and I hope we'll have you on again in the future. I'd love to. Thanks so much for having me, Stacey. Thank you for listening to a Community Cats podcast. I would really appreciate it if you would go to iTunes, leave a review of the show. It will help spread the word to help more community cats. 